Oh, my goddess. Yes, I, I honor goddess and God. Can we just have that song again? You know, basically, that song recommended by Diana Hughes. Let's give her and Robert some more love for that. That song is by a New Thought artist. His name is Daniel Neymod. He lives in Orange County. I used to live there. And uh, he actually sang that song at the World Parliament of World Religions, which was held in Toronto in 2018. It was one of the most moving songs because of the way he sang it. And you can also find that on YouTube. So you can find Daniel Neymod. His last name is N-A-H-M-O-D. I love that song, and it is perfect for today. I'm actually going to be going to the World, uh, the Parliament of World Religions in August of next year, and it's being held in Chicago. So I'm super excited. I just got my hotel reservations and things for that opportunity to meet with all the communities worldwide and all the religions. So from that... Uh, well, basically, how many of you know what we've been studying this year, every month? What are we studying? 12 powers. Very good. And uh, what are the 12 powers based on? This is quiz time, obviously. Charles and Myrtle Fillmore's. What, did, what was that that they were studying and came up the 12 powers from? Disciples. I heard the disciples. So... Charles Fillmore looked at the disciples and he looked at everything from that metaphysical point that every person, every name, every place, every situation in the Bible wasn't literal. It had symbolism that would refer to our lives. So he did this in-depth study and he looked at the 12 disciples and he realized each of them exhibit a spiritual ability or power that we all have. And so Charles did this teaching on the 12 powers in order for us to become more aware of the powers that we have and how we use them to, first of all, be conscious of them and then be able to use them in a constructive, productive way. So from the song you just heard, who can guess as to what power we're focusing on in August? It's so quiet. What was it? Oh, was it one power? <laughs> okay, so we're going to do exactly the power of power. Does that sound redundant? Yeah, it does to me. So it is the power of power, and I'm going to talk to you about this power. Now, in, there's a book called Power Up Your Life, and the authors talk about that we can have, well, first of all, power is often associated with people who are controlling, right? Trying to, to take control and, and do things and make things happen. Then there's also the other side, which is giving our power over. So they expand on that in this book, Power Up Your Life, and talk about that there are those with the underdeveloped power. That results in a person who cannot master things easily and allows the world of appearance to have control over their feelings and their actions. See, we have some music. <laughs> yeah. so, so this person has no sense of control, sometimes feels like a victim of circumstance and looks outside themselves for answers. Now I know none of you are like that and never, never been that way, but we recognize that there have been times when we have given our power away. We have felt like a victim. This isn't bad or wrong or to shame. It's just to recognize that we've had those experiences and we know others that tend to have that experience. Then we have the other side of the spectrum, which is the overdeveloped power, the egocentric. This is the person who comes across as overly controlling their lives and everybody else's. They typically are very uh, vocal and domineering, and they use their power to force ideas onto others to get the results that they want at the expense of others. Nobody here does that. I know you're all clear of that, so congratulations. However, don't we sometimes want to kind of make things happen? And that's using the power, and we know others. 
So neither of these sound really good to me. How about you? I, I'm not like not liking these two ideas. So I'm going to give you the actual power up the the power definition as described in Power Up Your Life, and see if this doesn't resonate better for you. Defined by unity, power is the ability to claim mastery, command authority of our thoughts, our feelings, and beliefs, express prerogatives and preferences. Does that sound better to you? I, I'm, I'm in favor of that definition and to understand that. So the color associated is with power is purple. And that's why I told Tammy, she was wearing the right color today. Purple is that power color. And where it's located in the body is the throat, the back of the tongue, the vocal cords, the vocal box. That's important to note that power is back here. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. Now, in the book, Divine Audacity by Reverend Linda Martella Witset, she also talks about uh, power. In her words, she says, we are created for power. It's in us to succeed, to move forward, and to accomplish. As is true for all of our abilities, power can be used to improve or control our material life. And it can be cultivated, cultivated at a spiritual power for inner transformation, as well as for blessing others. A hundred years ago, Charles Fillmore captured the trouble that so many have in succeeding. He says, today, Men are striving to acquire power through money, legislation, and man-made government, and falling short because they have not mastered themselves. Does that catch you, right? And this was over 100, you know, 100 years ago, something. So he, and it's still the case, it appears. Goes on to say, she says, God is not a being that expresses power. God is power itself. We are the divine power that expresses power. Did you know that you are powerful? And you can go to Marianne Williamson's. I'm not going to do her quote, but we are more powerful than we could imagine. And I won't do that quote, but you can always look at that because I think she's right on. So Linda Martilla with set, she also breaks the power of power um, into three components. One is self-mastery. One is concentration, and the third is spiritual authority. So today, we're going to go for the self-mastery, okay? Anyone who want to master yourself? <laughs> and what does that actually mean? Some of you might go, I don't even know what self-mastery means. So what are you talking about before I raise my hand? Linda says, spirit um, says, self-mastery is our capacity to guide our thoughts, words, and actions in integrity and alignment with our infinite divine self, instead of reacting from only the human impulses. Okay. To control your thoughts, your feelings, and your beliefs with the divine instead of going into reaction. Okay. You all with me? Yes? You can not sh shake your head. Don't nod off, but you can nod. <laughs> she says, so this power of self-mastery is when we know ourselves, we respect ourselves, and we respect others. We do not fool ourselves, but we tell ourselves the truth. We seek to understand the beliefs and attitudes underlying our impulsive emotions so we can correct misguided beliefs and change our attitudes, knowing that as we do so, our emotions will follow. So one of my teachers, T. Harv Eckert of Peak Potentials up in Canada, he had an acronym, TFAR, T-F-A-R. And his acronym stood for thoughts, lead to feelings, lead to actions, lead to results. 
thoughts lead to feelings, lead to actions, lead to results. Now together, and you do, can do the motions. Come on, we can work with me here. Thoughts lead to feelings, lead to our actions, lead to the results. So what's the most important first thing in TFAR? Thoughts. Oh, it's back to that thought, thought thing, that thought machine. See, we know in unity that everything, everything is a result of our consciousness. It doesn't mean we can control what's outside of us, but how I choose to think about it, I do have control over when I'm mastering self. Or I can let myself get caught up in the situation, the appearance, the and that's okay. I mean, we all get caught up in stuff, but how long do we stay there? And is there a different thought that I could think that would change my experience of this situation? Because again, we can't control life, but I can control my own internal world. And what does that mean? It means I look at my thoughts. I need to look at what I'm thinking. She also talks about that there's three things that happen when we're not, you can have evidence of not using our power. One is that we give our power over to other people. Have you ever done that? Yes. We've all given our power over to others. And there might be good reasons that we have. However, I'm not sure that that's something I want to think. I want to change that thought. And what's that about? Number two, ever been controlled by a compulsion? Okay, yes. I have had my ad addictive behaviors, okay? And that is part of the compulsion that we have that sometimes runs us. And the third is, no, nobody operates from fixed attitudes, right? No, okay. Well, uh, you know, so, so these are the things that can happen when we're not using our power adequately. Would you like to know how you can utilize power, the ability of power for your self-mastery. Who, who would like that? All right, I'll see you afterwards. And <laughs> so the first thing we need to do, because what's the first thing that goes in TFAR? Thoughts. So are you paying attention to your thoughts? Thoughts are things and repetitive thoughts become beliefs. You know what a belief is? You've all heard it's done unto us as we believe. Well, a belief is a thought that we hold to be true. And you know what? It might not be true. Just saying. So to watch our thoughts, to observe, to notice, where is the pattern of my thinking? Yeah, it takes some work to do that, but it is so worth it. And I'm going to give you a tool, and it is the wheel of life. Some of you who have taken class have heard this. So Judith Annette Milburn, Huntington Beach, she said, there's a wheel and we are like a wheel. There are spokes on the wheel of ourselves. And on those spokes, we have different parts of us. So I have a part of me that's happy. What is the opposite of happy? Sad. I have a part of me that's greedy. What's the opposite of greedy? Generous. I have a part of me that's angry. What's the opposite of anger? Joy. I have a part of me that's energized. What's the opposite? So, so here's the thing. Every emotion that we have ca capability, capacity for is on the wheel. And we always are going to have a, a light side, a higher vibration side, and a lower vibration side. That's just life. You know, we say God is all there is, and we say God is light. However, it's nighttime, it's dark. Well, is it really dark or just the absence of light? But that's a whole nother talk. So, so, so back to our wheel. There's also, uh, anyone done inner child work? Or do you got to, okay, some of you have gone into that journey. I have discovered my inner children, because my therapist said, I think you have, uh, we have inner children, and not just a child. I went, oh, 
I get it. I mean, I can have a be a baby when I'm tired, right? Cranky. How about the ten, temper tantrum part of you that gets really ticked off because it's not fair? And you might just have it in your head. I have a four-year-old self that just wants to play and not do big people stuff. Anybody? I have an eight year, uh, a 10 year old who thinks that adults are stupid, but don't say that because you'll get in trouble. I have a teenage self, but we won't even go there. See, the thing is, is we have lived all these aspects of our life and they don't go away and they still live within us. When we acknowledge that, then I turn me the, the analogy of this, this wheel into the bus of us, okay? But first, back to the wheel. In the middle of this wheel of your being, there is what is called the neutral observer. The neutral observer only has one line. Would you like to know what it is? Okay. Isn't that interesting? I love my mom. Isn't that interesting? I hate my mom. Isn't that interesting? I'm bored. Isn't that interesting? That person is really cranky. Isn't that interesting? This is a tool in my toolbox. So I can have a feeling, anything that I'm feeling, I can have the feeling. But when I say, isn't that interesting? It gives me a little distance from it. I'm having a jealous moment, a sad moment. Isn't that you're, you're doing well? Because there's going to be future days when I'm giving a talk and I'm going to say, isn't that? Yeah, you're getting your, this is your training. So isn't that? Okay, they got it. So, so now you have this tool of awareness. You notice what you're thinking and you say, Excellent. So to be able to notice what you're thinking is the first thing, because the acronym I'm going to use for today's self-mastery is ACT, A-C-T. First, we have to have awareness of what we're thinking. Awareness is the first key in anything that we're doing. So first of all, I need to be aware of what I'm thinking. Now, how many of you realize that you have subconscious beliefs? Beliefs that you created, but you don't think about them. And they're like the operating program in the computer of your being. And they're operating unless you bring them to light. One of the things that I did on money, anybody ever struggle with money? Okay, a couple of you. So I did this very interesting thing. I wrote with my right hand money and I said all these different things. And then I put it in my left hand and I went money. And the first thing came out of my pen in my non-dominant hand was money causes misery. I'm like, where did that come from? Now, because I was using my non-dominant hand, I went to the other side of my brain. And I said, well, I looked at that. This was a subconscious belief. And by the way, I wasn't able to make paycheck to paycheck during this time. So when I got that, I'm like, well, that's crazy. Where does that come from? But looking at it deeper, my four-year-old self saw my dad, who was an entrepreneur, he was working. His whole thing about how to love his family was to work, 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 and to work hard to make money. And, and I noticed that. And then I noticed mom was miserable on some level because he wasn't there often. So there's a little four-year-old who equates money causes misery. Not logical. However, it was an embedded belief. So what I had to do was realize that that was not true because money for me, I'd be like, no, money causes misery. I don't want that much. Interesting, right? Isn't that interesting? So, so I have this belief system that's running me. And I said, well, does money cause misery? No. Okay. Um, money's neutral doesn't have anything except what I put on it. And I said, well, I put a lower vibration on it. What's the highest vibration I can put on money? And I said, love, love is the highest vibration. So money is green love. 
That is how I looked at money. I went to the Savon store. I bought a red rubber stamp. I stamped all my checks with the heart. I stamped all of my, I stamped my checkbook with, you know, in the register with a heart. And if you ever see a dollar bill with a heart on it, I don't know where it came from. Here's the truth. My experience with money shifted. It shifted because I shifted what was going on in here. I didn't do anything externally to change my experience with having money. I all of a sudden started having just enough. I had more than enough money. So isn't that? Yes. So, so the question is, are you paying attention to your thoughts? I also do spiritual counseling. What of that part of that entails is finding out what our hidden beliefs are. Because again, if my belief system that I don't even know about is running me, I'd like to bring it to the light so I can change it. Okay. So awareness is key. It's the first key to self-mastery, aware of our thoughts. Then the C, and there's three, four C's. I could make me even probably more than that. The C stands for, and Linda Martellowitz said, said this, she said, we have to correct our misguided beliefs. We need to correct them, which I just talked about. So creating a new belief. So first of all, we're going to correct it by canceling it out. There's your second C. I cancel that thought. How do I cancel that thought? Is by, yeah, correct and cancel. Then I want to create, create a new thought. What is a thought that is more empowering? And because we have subconscious beliefs, we need to repeat them. That's what we talk about off affirmations. Affirmations are statements of truth as we want to believe it to be. We may not believe it at first, but you say something long enough and more enough, it'll start to sink in. And I think I see some head nods. You know this. So I create a new thought. Then here's the power C. It's that I see, choose, choose to embody that thought, to feel that thought. It is choice. I don't know if you know that your greatest power is not love. Your greatest power is choice. We can choose one thing and we don't have to stay with it. We can choose again. We have a power to choose our thoughts, how we respond. It's all about choice. So that is the C, the biggest C in the act. So we're aware. We are choosing a new thought because our new thought is going to create our outer experience. And the T, the T, when do you want to do this? When? Today. Today is the only day I have. Today is the only day you have. Now, I want to talk just briefly about the experience of creating our experience. There is a caveat to that. And the word is grief. Okay? I can control my feelings by what I think. However, there is an entity called grief. And some of you know that my, my beloved wife moved to California for a job a month ago. Well, for the month of July, I was in a lot of grief. And I needed to be. I was like a wounded animal just going, I'm, I'm crying every day. This isn't my normal. But did you know grief is a spiritual practice? We need to honor that. And, and grief, you can't control grief. Don't try. If you have a feeling like you want to cry, let it be. You know, kids are perfect teachers. They'll cry. They'll have their fit. They have whatever they're having in the moment because they're living in the moment. Next thing you know, they're off playing again. So I give myself permission to cry, to feel my sadness, knowing that and, and watching my thoughts, I'm doing a lot of isn't that interesting because I got a lot of thoughts running around, but I don't want them to run me. I don't want them driving the bus 
of us. There is a bus and all my inner children are on that bus and they all want different things at different times. The best way to get beyond the kids on the bus, and I used to think I'm driving the bus, spirits in the co-pilot seat. One day, spirit said, get out of the driver's seat and sit over here. I said, what is that about? So spirit says, I'm driving the bus of us. I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Because I'm a doer. Spirit goes, you get to enjoy the ride. Trust that we know where we're going. That's a big one. And take care of the kids in the back, right? When you got a part of you that's scared or anxious or needs to cry, you get to nurture those parts of ourselves. I became a good mom and good dad to my little Liz's. Because otherwise, I said, they said, if you don't pay attention, you're going to pay in other ways. I'm like, woo, that's my 10-year-old talking. <laughs> so, we, so we are at choice. It is our greatest power, to be honest. So I'm going to close with a, a reading. And again, ACT, what does A stand for? C, the biggest C of the three or four, it choice. And the T, today. Okay, now you got it. This is, I have a choice about today. I woke up early today, excited over all I get to do before the clock strikes midnight. I have responsibilities to fulfill today, and I am important. My job is to choose what kind of day I'm going to have. Today, I can complain that the weather is rainy, or I can be thankful that the grass is getting watered for free. Today, I can feel sad that I don't have more money, or I can be glad that my finances encourage me to plan my purchases wisely and guide me away from wastefulness. Today, I can grumble about my health, or I can rejoice that I am alive. Today, I can lament over, the, over all that my parents didn't give me when I was growing up, or I can feel grateful that they allowed me to be born. Today, I can cry because roses have thorns, or I can celebrate that thorns have roses right? Today, I can mourn my lack of friends, or I can excitingly embark upon a quest to discover new relationships. Today, I can whine, have some cheese with that wine, um, <laughs> because I have to go to work, or I can shout for joy because I have a job to go to. Today, I can complain because I have to go to school, or eagerly open my mind and fill it with new tidbits of knowledge. Today, I can murmur dejectively because I have to do housework, or I could appreciate that I have a place to call home. Today stretches ahead of me, waiting to be shaped, and here I am, the sculptor who gets to do the shaping. What today is going to be like for me is up to me. I get to choose what day I will have. So my question to you, what are you choosing today? Namaste.